Hi everybody, it's starting to snow. You know what that means. Snowball fight! Incoming! <laughs> Welcome to Fiddle Sticks and Stitches, I'm Fiddle. Today's projects are pots, pans, and a butter churn. Link to the scavenger hunt and patterns are listed in the description box below. The first piece we're going to start with is the pot. We will need our medicine bottles, a cutting tool, tape, and sandpaper. We're going to start by wrapping a piece of tape around the base of our medicine bottle. It will act as a guide for cutting the top of the bottle off and for poking the holes later. Now that our tape's on, go ahead and cut the rest of the bottle off. I found it best to make vertical cuts first with scissors and then go in with my knife after. Then give it a quick sand to knock off all the burrs or anything that might have happened while you were cutting. Leave the tape on because we need it for the next part. This is where we're going to poke the holes in the side of our pot for our handles. And it's just going to be a bit of wire. But the tape, once you've poked your holes, peel it off and stick it to the other side, almost directly across from where you had your first ones. And this gives you a template for where to poke the holes on the other side. Now you can take the tape off and we're going to need two pieces of about one inch long wire. We're going to bend these into a U shape for a handle. Once we have the wires bent, we're going to poke them through the holes that we made and we're going to make a hook like that on the inside of the pot. But you have to have the wire actually through the pot to bend it. And it's a little difficult to get in there, but here is a close up of me struggling to make that shape. Once you get your eye hooks made for all four points, use the end of your pliers to mash down the ends so they sit flush against the pot. To make sure our handles stay in place, we're going to use the baking soda super glue on the inside of the pot. Set it aside and we're going to start working on a frying pan. For this, we're going to need both lids from the big bottle and the little bottle and a pair of scissors. We're going to start by trimming off the little lip that's on the edge of the lid. After you're finished cutting, sand down the edge so it's nice and smooth. Pardon the interruption for some cuteness. Miss Frankie says hi. And then for some reason my video went white. I tried fixing it but it didn't work. Anyways, we need to poke a hole in the side of the lids. This will be where we're going to put the handle. We will be using the thicker wood dowel for the frying pan and the thinner wood dowel for the pots, but the overall process is still the same. Using your pokey tool again, poke a hole in both ends of your wooden dowel. Watch your fingers though. Cut an inch long piece of wire, leaving it straight, and poke it in one end and super glue and baking soda around it. This will be the piece that we're going to attach to the pan just like we did with the pots. For the other end of the handle, make another eye hook, then glue it in place. Attach the handle like we did to the pots by using your pliers and making the eye hook on the inside and the super glue and baking soda mix to secure it. Set it aside for now and we're going to start working on the baking pans. For this you're going to need your aluminum, a crappy pair of scissors, a ruler, and your pattern. Trace the pattern onto your piece of aluminum and cut it out. Next, use your ruler as a guide and bend up all your edges. For the bigger sheet pan, go ahead and glue the tabs on the outside. The smaller pan, we have to attach the handles before we glue down the sides. We need our wire and pliers for this. We're going to make exactly the same horseshoe shape as we did before, but we're going to give it one more bend at each end. So that way we can lay that end flat against the pan and glue it down with baking soda and super glue. On the smaller pan, adjust the pins to where they're pointing down and stick them in between the tabs and the side of the pan. Then glue it all together. To cover up my super glue spots, I painted mine black but I think the next set I'm actually going to leave silver. And I wanted to let you know that these also fit inside the stove if you followed that pattern. The next piece we're going to start is the butter churn. We will need the pattern piece labeled butter churn panel for this. I went through a few different variations of a pattern for this one, but the easiest way that I found to do it was cut out your piece and then trace it onto your wood eight times 
and then trace it onto a piece of paper eight times consecutively. The whole idea is to make a cone out of these pieces to help you glue down your fluid. For this part, you don't have to actually cut each individual section out. As I said, I had a few different pattern designs for this as I was working on it. So this was the extra step that I had to take. Make sure that you cover the whole outside of your cone with tape so that way glue don't stick to it as you're putting the rest of it together. Trim off the overhanging tape so that way it sits flush on the table and we're ready for the next part which is finally to cut out our wood pieces. At first I tried my little orange handled cutter for this but it did not work so well and originally I didn't think the easy cutter would work either because of the angle, but it actually worked so much better than my orange handle cutter. This thing has become my new favorite tool. Okay, when you go to sand, do it at an angle so that way they fit together and make the round shape. With all of my awkward angles, I had to sand quite a bit. Now we can use our cone to glue our pieces together.
Once it's dry and you've given it a good sand, trace both the top and bottom circles on a piece of wood and cut them out. Sand the edges until they're smooth and fit flush at all edges. Next, trace the top circle into a piece of cardboard and cut it out. We're going to be turning this into an X or a cross. Then glue it to the end of our dowel. Add glue to the bottom rim of the butter churn. Before gluing it to the base, put the dowel inside. Put a hole through the lid of the butter churn. Give it one more sanding and then we're ready to paint. I used burnt sienna and matte black. While the paint was still wet on the butter churn, I wiped it off so it still had the wood grain texture underneath. And with that, it brings us to the end of our lesson. If you would, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And don't forget to check out Patreon. There's a lot of things there that are useful. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.